that were somebody committed against your son, and in the affidavit or complaint, you indicated that someone had fired shots. Yeah, correct? stated, not indicated. Yes, sir. You stated that someone had fired shots. Yeah, there's no doubt. You didn't know who? No. And uh, as a result, I think the, the case came in, uh, and you know, I think the kid pled on the assault charges, and he pled on the settlement docket before Referee Cook, which is not uh, an open court proceeding. It's just really kind of a rubber stamp on an agree agreement reached by the DA and the uh, defense attorney. And I believe your question was that you wanted to go in and ask this young man who had the gun. Is that right? Oh, yes. Uh, well, and if somebody, I, that's not the only, um, if somebody else had wanted to or had done, um, I'm not whom you might think. I'm not interested necessarily in throwing somebody into the prison, nor am I, no, no, nor am I interested necessarily in suing somebody. No, I'm not, I'm not saying and believe that. Believe it or not, I'm trying to act like a citizen and not like a father. When somebody has fired a gun in a parking lot... I'm well, I've had this conversation with you before. Okay, well then... Uh, but that, am I, am I uh, summarizing what, what the, the issue is here, that you wanted to go in and ask this young man who had the gun? So the issue is I provided... Uh, danger to the citizens, and I'm a taxpayer. That is my initial issue. I am a citizen in the United States, and I supplied information that there was a gang, G-A-N-G, -G, gang, which was denied by Turner's preceder, his, his predecessor, that we had gangs. I offered the gang data, 15 people, and the shooting. What do you want the district attorney's office to do? Well, I needed to know who it is that, first of all, Yes, I think the simplest thing should have been, and still could be, to ask uh, Charles E. Folks who fired the shot and who his gang members are. Okay. We could certainly have his probation officer ask him that. Good. That's a start. He won't respond. But, I mean, I can't guarantee that he's going to tell. But if he does, you know. Okay, that's the first step. That's good. I appreciate it. The second point is what... I got the impression from Shelley Neal that it's some kind of illegality to ask him that question in the court. Well, the problem you're going to have is that you're asking, you can, in, if he's in a courtroom, uh, obviously you can't question him unless you're an attorney, number one. Number two, he can't be questioned unless he takes the stand. Number three, everyone in this country has a right against self-incrimination, and he cannot be forced to say in court who had a gun or whose gang he's in or what gang. He, he, you know, he can just sit there and say, I don't want to say a thing, and that's it. Okay, but, but it was it illegal to ask? It would have been, are you a lawyer? I'm a citizen, and I can sue you, you can sue me, I can arrest you. This is the United States of America. No, I'm not an attorney, but I don't think an attorney has any rights that I don't. Maybe that's changed. Yes, you have to be a member of the Tennessee Bar to... Uh, you know, address a court or a witness in a courtroom in the end. Okay. Well, could not the, the prosecutor have asked him? Sure. Why did she not ask him? We're trying to protect the city. We have this large crime rate. And I have lots of stories, including a house of mine that was burned. I had tenants that paid bribes to the uh, um, police, on and on. This is not a good city. And here we have a shooting and a gang, and we have excuses why it was not pursued. Next year, when that killing occur. I guess I've said this before, when if you're not trying to prevent crime growth, uh, we need a new mayor, or we need a new judge, or we need some new people that can at least ask. Yeah, I think the mistake that took place in this case was that Mr. Folks was never charged with any sort of weapon or gang sort of crime. As a result, uh, there was no basis for the Shelley Neal or anyone in this office to uh, question him regarding that, number one. Number two, um, he was charged with assault, and when he agreed to plead guilty to the assault, I mean, that kind of, if he was charged with something else, then, of course, obviously, we've gotten into a different kind of matter. Well, I can't answer why the police didn't investigate the allegations of, of gunshots. I can't, uh, I can't explain why the police gang task force wasn't called. I can't explain any of those things because I wasn't there. Because I turned in all the information. So the information that was given to us by the court was that Mr. Folks was charged with assault or striking or pushing whatever it was with your son, and that's the case that we disposed. Yes, but I didn't turn in. one had turned in information saying he's charged with a gun or he's charged with something else, certainly we would have handled the case differently. Uh, okay. Um, I've heard the word charge over and over and over. Now, I am acting like a detective or uh, anybody else. I'm supplying with all the possible data. If 
I see an extra shot in Martin Luther King or I see a person wearing this kind of hat, I, that is information. That is not a charge because I don't know the name of the man who might have also fired. I'm giving all of the data like the best possible policeman or detective. I used to investigate car wrecks for two years for an insurance company, and um, I've done a lot of things. Um, I gave all possible data, so you don't need... Was this data given to the police officer who came to the scene? It was given to the juvenile court. It's my initial report. Okay. The police officer arrived, and he already knew, and he... I'm not sure. He was he just generally upset with how the juvenile court doesn't fall through and they come up with things. I called him, and he, he was upset that not, not more had happened. But I don't mean to say that he's innocent or that he's police or not, but I turned in every possible piece of information, and it's all in writing. And then somebody took that and shrunk it down and say he is charged with. I don't necessarily want him charged, per se, with anything. I want the entire gang to be addressed. Well, actually, then, if that's what you're looking for, you should call the police department gang task force and report all the information you have to them and ask that they investigate it. All right, I will do that. That is something to do then. Uh, and then they will say that it's all uh, um, overruled by the judge. That's oh, what the judge was that. There's been nothing here about a gang or weapons or anything. There's there was in my writing. Yes, but there was no charge. Thus, double jeopardy is not attached. We can always go back and charge this kid with anything and everything that he's done you regarding mean, the gun and the gang. He didn't pull the gun. He didn't shoot the gun. Then, then he's not guilty of it. He is guilty of, 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 of upholding it. Did you saw him hold the gun? No, I said he is part of the gang. Hold the gun. No, of course not. Well, then what did he do? He is he is not supplied data on the other person. You mean if one of my sons kills somebody and I didn't kill, then I don't have to talk? Right. You have a constitutional right in this country to keep your mouth shut when it involves any sort of criminal matter. Fine, but... Go ahead and ask, and then when I say that, you'll have you'll at least know that. See, we didn't try to do anything. It's this reductionism, so we can move on to something else, go to lunch. That's my. So, so that's your right. Well, it's obvious. It's ask this kid who had the gun yes. or anything about the gang. And I, he has a lawyer father, and I'd be surprised, frankly, if the father didn't go ahead and move it over to somebody else. Uh, I don't know. Why don't we get the police? Yes. Go ask him. I'll do that. I get the probation officer to ask him. That should satisfy you, right? Well, let's move on. I'll do that, uh, or you'll do it. Whatever it's good for me to do. I will contact the probation officer and ask the probation officer to ask him about any sort of gang that he's in or any sort of gunfire that took place at this time for yes. further investigation. Because we have two. And what bothers you? Contact the police department and uh, intelligence division and uh, just call 862-8600 and ask for the intelligence division. Look at the phone number and tell them that you have information regarding a gang and what you have and ask them to look into it. But why, why did your legal department, which I'm still not through with, not uh, bring in the witnesses that I listed? I listed three witnesses. I listed everything possible. There wasn't a trial. Why don't you care about the crime? If you care about this... care about the crime, sir. The district attorney's office is not the police department. It's not an investigative unit. Why doesn't she go down on... The unit, ...and we prosecute cases that are given to us to prosecute. Why doesn't she, as an innocent, as an honest citizen, go down on her own time, buy coffee, whatever it takes, and say, we'd like you to do the rest of the story here, and then hand over my data? I gave three witnesses. Who, and who do you want to do that? Why didn't this... Shelly Neal. Do what? Go to take my data and do the do the. She's an honest uh, judge. Why does she's an officer of this court? She is charged by the Constitution of the State of Tennessee and the Supreme Court to prosecute cases that do nothing else. Anything else would be considered malicious prosecution on her behalf, and she acted 100 percent in accordance with the law and the charges she was given by the governor. She wasn't able to go give my information to the police. That isn't a charge. That's information. Data. Hand over my data, which gives... I don't know why you keep wanting to dig this up, sir. We are going to talk to the probation officer, and you are going to call the police. If you want to file a formal complaint against me or Ms. Neal, by all means, go ahead and do it with the Board of Professional Responsibility, with Tori Johnson, who's my boss, or with anyone else. But don't keep calling me and digging up the same issue when we have a resolution for it. Okay, well, we're going to call the... Going to, you're going to call the pro... Uh, we're going to call whom? The, uh, we are going to call the police at 862-8600 ask for the intelligence division. Intelligence division. If you get a hold of them, you're going to give them all the information that you want to about a possible gang or gunfire situation that occurred when your son was assaulted. Yes, it was not possible, according to the two witnesses that okay. showed up. 
you we were prevented from every information that you have. I'm going to ask the probation officer. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.